Right on, summer, yeah. Abyss. So I am thankful to be here. And uh, Tim already mentioned, and many of you already know, that I will um, not be pastoring this three church district, Batavia, Lockport, and Couriers, starting in July. And I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be your pastor over the last eight years. I was, or, I originally met some of you in March of 2015, and I am thankful that Lockport embraced me as their pastor, especially since I was only, I was only 23 years young. <laughs> and I am thankful that over the years, Lockport has been a great support for me as I learned how to pastor and serve uh, the, the area. And um, I, I'm just really thankful for, um, for Lockport. And the reality is that pastors can move around, but Jesus is always with us. Amen. And over the last eight years, I pray that you have been led to Christ and that you continue to walk with the Lord. And I, I, I wrestled with what to share with you all on this high Sabbath. Today we have three individuals who are giving their lives to Jesus and simultaneously are also joining our church. So I thought, what is the last message that I can share with Lockport? What should I share? And um, I have a rhetorical question for you a question that you're supposed to answer in your heart today, which is, what does God require of us? Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, as we come together this uh, afternoon, we pray that you bless our time. Lord, you require something from us. So, Lord, may we be able to follow through with that responsibility. Lord, by your grace, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Genesis 1, verses 1 through 2. Genesis 1, verses 1 through 2. And, the, and, and this is at the beginning of your Bible, so I'm going to go pretty quickly since turn over the, the table of contents, and I'm sure you'll find yourself in Genesis 1, verses 1 through 2. And the scripture says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Let's break it down. The Bible says that in the beginning, God existed. We need to understand that Genesis 1 is bringing to our attention that in the beginning, before anything was created, God was there. Typically, we think about religion as what I do for God. But rather, Genesis 1 says that before any religiosity, God existed. So when we think about what we've gone through in our lives, don't think, oh, my problems exist, now let me go to God. Think in your, in your mind that before you, God was present. That at the, at the origin of our experience as Christians is to realize that, that God existed before any of our own responsibilities. Typically, we think about Christianity as what I do for God. Oh, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, so I go worship on Sabbath. Oh, I do this, I do that, and whatever. But before we do anything, God existed. There's this cute acronym that, you, that, that is displayed on the screens that stands for Bible. Have you ever heard of it? People often say that the Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. It's cute, but there's some limitations to that. Is the Bible simply instructions before leaving earth? There was a study done in when analyzing products that people return. Have you ever bought something and then returned it to the store? Walmart will accept about anything. As long as it, it's in a box, they'll accept it. That's the joke, right? Well, the research was done on, you know, typically they ask you, is there anything wrong with what you're returning? And I, hopefully you're honest, and if it is wrong, broken, you say, it's broken, I would like my money back, or it exchanged. Well, the study em uh, specifically emphasized the products that were returned because they were defective, all right? You go to the store, you say, I, this doesn't work, so I would like my money back. Well, the study concluded that about 90% of things that are returned because they're defective 
actually still worked. You guys get that? And the study then said, well, what, what's causing people to return them and then saying that they're defective? And the study said, well, if people read their manuals, they most likely would fix the issue that they have with the product. This emphasized that people do not typically read manuals. So if we tell people the Bible's basic instructions before leaving earth, aren't we limiting the word of God? The word of God is more than just instructions. The word of God is showing us God's heart. The text says that God created the heavens and the earth. We need to understand that God's desire has always been for his people. That God wants the best for you. Genesis 1 says that God created everything for you and, and me to experience and enjoy. God didn't create simply to create. He created because he loves you. The Bible is not egocentric. It's not about what you do for God. But it's realizing that the Bible is about an altruistic God. That's a fancy word to say that the Bible is about a selfless God. That God created everything and then he then gave that to us as an act of selflessness. Church, we worship a selfless God. We worship a God that would rather die on the cross than live without you. We worship a God that loves us to the point of death. The text says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Bible is communicating to us that God's Spirit works in our midst. You do not think that you need to be the perfect citizen for God to work in your life. But rather know that God works in your mess. God works in your midst. That God works in our lives. Typically we think, oh, we're Christians. How can we lead people to Jesus as if God isn't already working in their hearts? We must always pray that the Lord works in our communities. Amen? People tell me, Pastor, Western New York is so, such a difficult terrain to be a church. And I get that. I've lived in the Bible Belt. The Bible Belt has different values and so forth. I understand the limitations of Western New York uh, ability to grow. But is God working in Western New York? And this is one of the chief responsibilities, the reasons why I wanted to stay in New York. Because I wanted to serve and be, uh, be near us as we reach Western New York. Amen? Amen? God is involved in his creation out of love. God creates out of love. God doesn't create out of micromanaging. Have you ever met a micromanager? Someone that's constantly uh, critiquing what you're doing because they want you to do the things their way. So the question, another question to ask is, is God a micromanager? Is God just always critiquing? Have you ever met that church member that's always like, everyone's off, everyone's awful? God is not like that church, but God works amongst broken people, and he will lead you in your life if you allow him to do so. God desires relationship, not just actions. The text that we read today, Matthew 7, emphasize the idea that there are people who do things for God. So have you ever done something for God? Is that what God wants from us? For us to do things for him. And in, the, in Matthew chapter 7, it said that there's people who will do things, but Jesus will return to those people and say, wait, who are you? Have you ever received a phone call from someone and you don't recognize the number you answer? And they're like, oh, hey, you are Edgar. And you're like, wait, who's this? God will say that to those that do religious things without having a relationship with Jesus. God doesn't just want actions. He wants your heart. He wants a relationship with you that isn't just found in a church building, but it goes to your home. My mother asked, uh, asked me this at a very young age. Is, are you convinced or converted? Have you ever met a convinced Christian or a convinced Seventh-day Adventist? Someone that knows about the Sabbath, but they're not converted. And that doesn't mean that, you, that, that people who are converted don't make mistakes. Ooh, that's going to rub people the wrong way. Because let, let me explain this. 
There are Christians who are convinced about the Sabbath but are terrible to newcomers who are just learning about the Sabbath. There are people who think that they are all perfect. They're convinced of that, but they're not walking with Jesus because you would see it in their actions. Walking with Jesus, what does that mean? Or what does conversion mean? I believe that conversion happens while walking with Jesus. Don't just focus on what you need to change in your life. Focus on walking with Christ. Christ will take away your addictions. Christ will take away your, your temper. Christ will take away the sin in your life when you spend time with him. Today, today we have three baptisms. And what does God require of each person that's getting baptized? What does God require of us? That was the original question. And I want to uh, turn your attention to Micah 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Church, my invitation for you, as we serve in the greater New western New York area, is to walk humbly with Jesus. If you want to change the world, don't just change the world by criticism. Change the world by walking with Christ. And when you walk with Christ, others will notice. But your emphasis must be walking with Christ. Do you want to walk with Christ? Do you want to make that commitment? Because Christ never leaves you. We're the ones that walk away. So may we go back step in step with Jesus to walk with him as we await his soon return. Let's have a word of prayer before we have our vows for the new bapt uh, baptisms taking place today. Let's pray. Lord, as we come together this morning, we pray, Lord, that we are not just convinced of Bible truth, Lord, that we're, it's easy to just get into the routine of being a Christian, Lord, but we want to be converted. But, Lord, we see that conversion takes place while walking with you. So, Lord, we take the promise of Micah 6, 8, that we want to walk humbly with you, Lord. May you change us from the inside out because of that relationship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask the candidates for baptism to come up for a, a, some vows that they'll take before, uh, with us. So um, we have Ron, Curtis, and Robert will come up here, right here, please. Now you can stop streaming this because we're going to go without uh, mics. So you can stop streaming the service.